Let's talk about the Sabbath, the scripture. What's the Bible say about it? Sabbath keepers, law keepers, people that say they honor the Sabbath today in the spirit. Okay, there's approximately 150 verses in the whole King James Bible. Um, 55 verses, particularly in the New Testament. Starting with the creation, seven days. On the seventh day, God rested. Well, Hebrew calendar, the seventh day always falls on Saturday. So Saturday is the correct Sabbath day. Now, God rested on the seventh day. He worked six days, rested the seventh. Now you've got the creation of Adam and Eve in the garden. In the garden, they didn't do it because Adam didn't work. Adam and Eve didn't work in the garden. Everything was provided for them. And then they were told not to eat of the tree of knowledge, which would put them in a fallen state in the world. Well, they did it anyhow. So now the garden's taken away and they're going to be part of the world. Now, when we're in Christ, Jesus said, I've chosen you and now you're not part of the world no more. We're strangers here. So we're not part of the laws of Israel and the things of the world. But let's look what happened. Israel did not remain faithful to God. So God kept doing things to try to bring them around. Eventually, with Moses, they were given the law. The law was to keep them separate from ungodly, unfaithful tribes of people that were doing very bad things. Human sacrifice, okay, sodomy, all kinds of terrible things. He wanted to separate his people and keep them faithful to him. So he put the law on them to punish them for sin, to teach them to be good. And they never were able to keep the law because it started out with 10, many, many, many more laws, hundreds of laws. They had so many laws, they couldn't figure them all out. And so nobody kept it. It never took care of the sin problem. It just continually punished people. So the answer was to have Jesus come as the Messiah. Well, they knew about the Messiah being their savior. They're still waiting on the Messiah today. They missed it with Jesus, which was divine providence. And Jesus turned to the Gentiles, us, and now we are no longer in the world, Jesus says, and we are following him in spirit and truth with the Holy Spirit. And we are no longer under the law because on the cross in his flesh, he abolished the law in the book of Ephesians, it says, and the handwriting and ordinances and commandments. So Jesus is Lord over the Sabbath. We rest in Jesus, not in the day. That's for the people of the world. So you have Jewish law of the Sabbath that if you break it, you'll be punished. And then you have the other cultures and nations all over the world. You know, most of them have Sundays off. They go to the first day or they have a particular day of the week they rest. Common sense. Do they have make holy days out of it? No, the Jews make holy days out of certain days, feast days and different things. It says in the New Testament, we're not under those uh, ordinances either. We worship in spirit and truth. So what we're going to do is very quickly start looking at the Bible, go through the New Testament, which is for the Jews. And, and, and then they become converted to Christians. And then the whole New Testament becomes about the Gentile Christian church and those Jews that convert to Christianity and join the Gentile church. The Hebrew, Israel, Jewish people are still under the law. And then there are Christians that do not follow the Holy Spirit, and then they continue sinning, but one reason that they can be saved and continue living in sin, so they come up with Sabbath law. They say it's not a law, but it is for them. And they don't stop sinning. But let's take a look at, at the New Testament. Probably have to make two videos. I'm going to go through all 50 verses and just say very quickly what it's talking about. And when it's important, we'll focus in on it more. Matthew 12, 1, uh, Jesus went on the Sabbath day and picked corn. Now, the same story is going to go through four different Gospels. But he picked corn to eat. It was breaking the law to pick corn. Sabbath law. And the scribes, well, the Pharisees saw it. They came to him and they threatened him. Eventually, they will threaten to kill him for breaking Sabbath law picking corn, healing people. He said he's Lord over the Sabbath. They wanted to kill him. They had the legal right to do it because it says if you break Sabbath law, it's capital punishment. That's the biggest problem you have right there with Sabbath keepers. They don't keep the law <laughs> and they want to kill you for not keeping the law. It's all a religious spirit, Sabbath keeping. Matthew 12, 5, he read the law on the Sabbath days in the temple. And uh, the priests in the temple profaned the Sabbath and then they were hypocrites. So nobody's kept it. Okay, Matthew 12, 8, it says, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. See, Jesus is God. The name of God is Jesus. That, he's a divine spirit manifested in the flesh. That's his name. He is Lord of everything. The Sabbath was only used in that way that God wanted it used at that time period. Now we have him instead of the day. Matthew 12, 10. Okay. Is it lawful to heal on Sabbath days? Again, they're attacking Jesus for this. Uh, 12, 11. You got an animal that falls into a pit. Is it lawful to pick him up out of the pit on the Sabbath day? See, they're all fighting, accusing Jesus of sinning on the Sabbath day. Did he? Yes, because you're not allowed to do that on the Sabbath day. So the same Sabbath people, they come and they'll attack you. You've got to keep the Sabbath. Well, what do you do? Now they get all confused. <laughs> they got so many laws. And um, they try to strip it away and make it just a spiritual thing on the Sabbath. And that don't work. You either have to keep the law or break the law. And Matthew 12, 12, again, is it better for a man to do well on Sabbath days or not? See, the, the religious people who were trying to keep Sabbath, couldn't. 
And that's what the law is for, just to punish people, to try to make them get good. But they don't go to God for repentance. They don't go to God for the power to abstain from sinning. They want to have some sort of law justify them. And uh, Mark 1.21, uh, Jesus taught on the Sabbath days. Mark 2.23, he's picking corn. This is another gospel talking about it. Pharisees told him it was unlawful. Mark 2.24, Mark 2.27, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man, not the man for the Sabbath. His Sabbath was made for man to rest. And you can honor God every day of the week, but especially on that day. But they turn it around, just like the Adventists. They say, if you don't keep the Sabbath, you will not enter into heaven. Well, all of a sudden, they put it over the top of man and over the top of Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Sabbath keepers don't have the atonement. They got a day. <laughs> we don't have a day. We got Jesus. Okay. Mark 2, 28. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Whoa. That's a capital offense to tell that to the scribes and Pharisees. And they watched him heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him. They will accuse you if you don't keep their Sabbath because they're evil in their hearts. And that'll happen today with Sabbath keepers that have religious spirits. Uh, Mark 3, 4. Is it lawful to do good on Sabbath days, Jesus said? And they, they don't care what's good or evil. They only care whether you will honor the Sabbath. And the law is a stumbling block for them. If they had Jesus in their heart, they would drop it all. They would have love replace it. Mark 6, 2. Okay. Um, he done mighty works by his hands and he did them on the Sabbath day? You don't do that. Okay. Mark 15, 42, um, talking about the preparation of Christ before the Sabbath. Mark 16, 1, the Sabbath was passed. Mary Magdalene brought spices. They all brought spices in to anoint his body after his death. Then we jump to the book of Luke 4, 16. Um, they stood up to read on the Sabbath day, just a general speaking. Luke 4, 31, they uh, taught them on Sabbath days. Jesus did. This is before the church started, before Pentecost, while he's dealing with Jews. Okay, Luke 6, 2. The Pharisees come and told him he was doing unlawful things on the Sabbath days and accused him. They'll accuse you if you don't join them, if you don't join them. Luke 6, 5. The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. I don't like that. You tell a Seventh-day Adventist, you don't need his Sabbath because you got Jesus. You watch the devil come out of them. I've seen it over and over. They will become angry and agitated. Then if you ask him, well, since you think this is the correct doctrine, do you still commit sin? They say every day. And they say, well, 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 9. Read it. Whosoever commits sin is of the devil. But you got the Sabbath day, but you're of the devil. Oh, boy. Luke 6, 6. Um, they taught on the Sabbath. Luke 6, 7. Uh, the scribes and Pharisees attacked Jesus for healing a man on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. They will accuse you, just like they did Jesus. Jesus was attacked by Sabbath keepers. And they will attack you today. And we're going to probably make two videos on this. Luke 6, 9. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day? That's what Jesus returned to comment to them. Of course, they don't care what's good. They want to get you for not keeping their day. Luke 13, 10. Teaching people on the Sabbath. Uh, Luke 13, 14. Okay. Jesus healed on the Sabbath, and uh, that was unlawful. It actually was breaking the law. It wasn't that they falsely accused Jesus. Jesus broke Sabbath law. He did it. And that's capital punishment. Luke 13, 15. Um, Jesus called them hypocrites. Um, because if they're cow or their donkey fell in a pit, would you pull it out on the Sabbath? I mean, you know, it's just arguing over this. Instead of being free from sin, they're going to keep a day. It happens. It happens with us now. And the Sabbath was good. It's part of the law that brought Israel and separated them from the evil other other uh, nations that were doing terrible things. And But we have a much better thing. We have the law abolished, the commandments, the handwritings, the ordinances, the law is abolished by Jesus. That's told to us in the book of Ephesians. Uh, Luke 14, 1. Okay. Um, the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath. They watched him. <laughs> he broke law again. Uh, Luke 14, 3. Okay. Is that lawful to heal people on the Sabbath day? Jesus is arguing back with them, telling them there's a difference between sinning, doing good, and evil. They can't see it. Just like Sabbath keepers today. If you don't keep the Sabbath, you're not honoring God. You're not going to go, you know, you got to join us. No, no, no. I follow Jesus. I don't join you. I'm not going back in the world under the law, even when you deceivingly try to say you're not under the law. <laughs> you twist this all around. Basically, they will come after you like they did Jesus. Okay, your ox falls in a pit. Will you pull him out on the Sabbath day? Jesus said, Luke 14, 5. The preparation of the Sabbath drew on. Talking about an event coming on Luke 23, 40, 54. Luke 23, 56. They rested on the Sabbath day and uh, prepared spices and anointments to anoint the body of Jesus. They're all following Jewish law. Next video.